Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and Celebrity Interviews live from the Grotto with Greg Hanna. Greg, what's going on, man? How are you? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, Neil. And I'm so excited for our guest today. It's like, I feel like I'm one of their family. Yes, exactly. Child actor, my three sons, Barry Livingston. And Barry, you've been in so many other things after those, but you went through a lot of challenges as a child actor, especially in that time period. Barry, thanks for stopping by. How are you? Oh, my pleasure. I'm great. Great. All right. So let's kind of talk about it. The The challenges of being a child actor, and we can get into my three sons, but just at that time period where they really didn't know how to handle child actors at that time. Would you agree? Um, you know, the, I, I'm, I'm divided on that issue. I, I, yes, there, there, there was a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say the abuses that took place in the early days of filmmaking, when you had Jackie Coogan and Jackie Cooper and, you know, uh, no, no laws and rules that were restricting the amount of hours that they could work. You know, by the time I did My Three Sons, it was in the 1960s. There was a guardian. There was the Board of Education would get involved. You know, if there were issues, you you couldn't work past. Uh, well, you couldn't do more than an eight hour day. But it, but again, the, the problems sometimes occurred offset, <laughs> you know, with the parents, not necessarily the people that you were working for. Because those they were you know they were governed by laws and they had to abide by them um, and pretty much they did but our set was was problem free you know we we had a great environment that's amazing you got to tell me so what was it like working with your real brother as a brother uh, yeah it's just a pain in the ass all the time you know what can you say it's a brother no you know my brother and I considering how much time we spent together uh, on set we shared a dressing room we shared a school room. We shared a bedroom at home, <laughs> so it's a wonder we didn't kill each other. Uh, yeah, we and we're still best of friends today. I always looked up to my brother Stan, and uh, you know he sort of blazed the trail. He was, you know, on the Ozzy and Harriet show before me, and then he got cast on My Three Sons, and then I, I sort of filled his slot on the Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Um, so you know, we 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 got along great. You know, I honestly, I. I just don't even recall us ever ever having a real, real intense fight, maybe disagreements, but we never we never had any problems. So let's talk about shows like My Three Sons. Why do they still live on? Why is it so? I, I never watched really My Three Sons because I'm 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 50, but I maybe watched it a few times. It depends on the age level, but yeah, everyone's yeah. heard of it. Why? Why is it but, so synonymous? Well, it, it's, yeah. it's reached that tipping point now where you'll go to a young person and you'll you'll say My Three Sons, and they'll go, you know, blank stare, going. Yeah. Uh, or even Fred, you've heard of Fred McMurray, right? And you know, blank stare. Uh, which to me, you know, Fred McMurray was one of the great stars of, of Hollywood prior to My Three Sons. So, um, you know, the longevity of the show was that it was a family drama. It's still relatable, all the problems that, that occurred within the house. And, and it had a little bit of a unique, um, you know, a, a unique format where it was an all-male household originally. That's That was the original concept. By the end, you know, there was daughter-in-laws, there was there was wives, there was kids, you know, all kinds of, of uh, you know, people got away from the original concept. But still, it's it's non-threatening. It's just pure entertainment. There, there was no message, no big heavy message trying to be told. And, and it was done very skillfully. Wow. You know, you mentioned something, you know, you did work with the legend, Fred McMurray. Um, you know, what were some of the memorable moments that you had working with him on set? You know, Fred was very quiet. Honestly, he was a very shy man, I thought. Uh, you know, over time, I kind of got to know him, know that part of him a little better. You know, some people might have thought he was a Lou for a movie star, but he he truly was just a very kind of humble, small town kind of guy who who got lucky. He was obviously a really good looking guy and talented. So uh, so that that was uh, eased, eased his way into Hollywood. But, you know, his his um, you know, he had um, kept to himself pretty much. You know, I mean, I think one of the funnier things was he got very uh, while he was doing My Three Sons and he suddenly exploded onto the American television scene as dad and everybody. uh you know, respected him. He was just an icon, you know, even in the early days. And then he went and did Billy Wilder's film, The Apartment, because, uh, you know, he was an actor. And But he played a real cad in 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 the film. You know, he was a real, real nasty guy. 
uh, it was like a very madman esque film. I don't know if you've ever seen the apartment, but he played the 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 boss who you know leveraged his power over the mm. female employees and anyway so but he 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 went to disneyland one time with his family and some woman <laughs> recognized him who had just seen the apartment and came up and hit him over the head with her purse and <laughs> you know to her it was real that he had betrayed his family and how could you you know you're so bad and you're you know i i always thought you were this really sweet guy on my three sons and you you know and you hurt shirley mclean in the apartment and you know he went on and on about that fred did and he and it just traumatized him so much he never did another major movie after that oh, no. he never wanted to go against the character that he that he created now when we talk about some of the legends greg that he's worked with i'm just going to mention some of them elvis jerry lewis debbie reynolds mickey rooney Lucille Ball, Jackie Gleason, Ozzy Nelson, and the list goes on and on. Let's talk about when you said working with Elvis. Not a lot of people could say, hey, they've worked with legends. Okay, like that. that's slightly wrong. I was working at Paramount uh, doing a movie with Debbie Reynolds called My Six Loves. And I, I didn't work with him, but I, I was on the lot. He was on the lot shooting another movie. I don't know the name of it, but uh, this was the early 60s. And I came across this limousine, beautiful, white, customized limousine. It was idling outside of a soundstage. And I was riding my bike around, just blowing off steam. And so I, you know, the door back door was open, you know, an invitation to look in and uh so I stopped, looked, oh, you know, it was really cool inside, of, you know, all white leather and gold trim, then had a television, which completely freaked me out when I was, you know, 10, 12 years old or whatever I was and saw a TV in a car. And then Elvis kind of came out of the soundstage because it would, had been delivered and customized. He was going to take a look at it. And so, uh, you know, he saw me and he said, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, brought it over. I'm just going to take it for a test spin. You, you want to go? Uh, and I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, looked looked around and see if my mother was watching, but yeah. it was Elvis, you know, and yeah. and uh, you know, and I know that it sounds rife with a lot of today's issues of adults taking advantage of kids. It occurred to me actually only recently, strangely enough, that he knew me from my from the Ozzie and Harriet show. I wasn't just some random kid on the on the show. He he was a big fan of Ricky. I'm sure he watched the Ozzie and Harriet, so he knew who I was. It wasn't just some some little guy running around the lot. He knew I was a fellow actor uh anyway so that was my encounter with elvis we took about a 10 minute drive around the lot had a coke watched popeye uh on his tv uh and uh then we parted ways and and you know it's pretty pretty magical experience oh that's amazing you know besides besides doing all the acting you also did writing and producing um what what was that like did have you done particular projects in the past that like your um, you know, I, I honestly, all the ones that I've written and sold never got made, but that's the way Hollywood is. Um, actually, I developed a project with Stan Lee that uh, called Vampirates, and we, um, you know, we, we, you know, it's just one of those things. The company we sold it to uh, went belly up. Um, but primarily, you know, my 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 life has been as an actor, and uh, I continue to act today and have a couple of actually a uh, big project out right now. And it's called Mrs. Davis. It's oh, I've been hearing some big things on this. Uh, uh, this is wild because it's involving yes. AI, and Greg's going to like this. Tell a little bit about Mrs. Davis because I heard Tell from me. somebody. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Davis is fantastic, and it and it is wild. It's a wild ride. I got to tell you, I was not prepared for that. I I didn't have the opportunity to read all eight episodes, uh, so I was only aware of my particular role in it. But it's, you know, an AI entity app, whatever has has really taken root in the world to the point of which people are are almost worshiping AI, almost as like replacing God and a, a, a very uh, rebellious nun who plays Be Betty Gilpin plays this this person who goes out to to, you know, find out what's, what it's all about, what it's doing to people and try to overturn this tide that's taken over the world. Uh, Mrs. Davis is the name. That's what they referred to as this, this all-knowing, all-seeing, all-consuming you know, consuming AI out there. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, really good show. Really, really great show. Brie Larson called uh, Lessons in Chemistry, which hasn't come out yet. And I know that's Apple TV. 
<laughs> uh, but search Google Mrs. Davis. Nick, and then Greg has his final question. Because right. MMA, you were starring in that one. Tell us about that film, because I see that in your press. Time. Yes, well, you know, that was a great project. Uh, probably the best role I've had in recent years. Uh, it was about Nick Newell, who his stage name was Notorious Nick. He was an uh, MMA fighter. But the unique part about his life is that he only had one arm. He had a congenital defect. So he he really was only able to use one arm in his in his life and and certainly in in the ring and so he um you know i played his wrestling coach in high school uh and anyway he embarks on you know uh, trying to break into the world of mma which didn't want anything to do with him cuz he you know they were going he's he's, he's either going to get really really seriously hurt here uh you know and nobody wanted to fight him cuz that who well if he beats me i got beat by a one armed guy so Anyway, that, you know, long story short, he he does get into the world. He proceeds to gain the respect of fellow uh, fighters. And I played his his coach uh, throughout the film at, in his MMA career. And uh, he finally gets a shot at the title. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but <laughs> but you can probably figure it out. But it's a true story. Nick Newell was uh, was, uh, you know, ma um, pretty amazing guy. Interesting. Okay. Greg has a final question. He asks all celebrities about specifically uh, a question. And it's really a deep question. Go ahead, Greg. No, great, Barry. It's been a real pleasure, you know, meeting you and getting to getting to know you a bit. Um, but let me ask you this, um, you know, for myself, for all the potential listeners, what do you feel, Barry, is the most important thing in life you've ever learned? <laughs> find a good partner. <laughs> find a good partner. Uh, you know, uh, my wife. We've been married for forty years, and uh, yeah, you know that that uh, is a is a big deal. You know, I mean, I I think you can't overstate that enough because you're going to, particularly as an actor, you're going to have a lot of ups and downs. And in my life, my my wife uh, was not an actress, uh, not really associated with show business, so it it gave a kind of a balance to my life, particularly when things. We're, we're not firing on all cylinders uh and it gave you know stability and 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 tranquility and all those good things um if i can dovetail on to that i'd say the second most important thing is just i call it re rejecting the rejection you know you get rejected a lot in this business but you have to reject that rejection you have to make it you know push forward and and not let that control your life because it can take you into a tailspin in a very dark place Wonderful. Thank you. And such, such great stuff. Best place people can find information on you, Barry. Where can they go? Uh, you know, I'm on Instagram. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on uh, Facebook. Um, you know, that's about the extent of it. I don't I don't do I don't tweet. Um, uh, but yeah, that you know, and just Google my name and you'll probably find some stuff that's out there. And and um, yeah, that's that's where you'll find me. We appreciate it. Thanks again, Barry. Okay, yeah, thanks, good to see you. Thank you. All right, Bye -bye. that was Celebrity Interviews live from the Grotto with Greg Hanna. Guys, take care.